everyone. This is Ashley Latecki Ellenboss with Sky House Herb School and Apothecary. And today's topic is herbs and grief. And we'll be specifically focusing on collective grief and personal grief and looking at two plants, Crataegus um, or Hawthorne and strawberries. So I hope today's talk will be both enriching and help you to go deep into this idea and the process of grief and at the same time give you some tools so that you can find some levity and find some movement uh, through the process of grief. Before I dive in, please, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do that. Just click on the subscribe button. Um, if you like this video, click like. That helps me to reach more people. Um, and I do think that a topic like this is an important one. So let's dive into this, uh, herbs for grief. I recently attended a lecture with Robert Wall Kimmerer. Some of you might be familiar with her work. She wrote the book, Braiding Sweetgrass, which really took off and I think was a really transformative book for so many people. And in her talk, which was really more like a love sermon than a lecture, <laughs> um, she spoke about the idea of grief and its relationship with love. And I think so many of us right now are feeling a sense of deep loss on both a personal level. Maybe we've lost a loved one. Um, maybe we've been met with some really deep disappointment. Um, or maybe there's just a sense of a longing, uh, a longing even for something that we can't put our finger on that's causing us heartache. And so as she spoke about this grief that we carry, um, this personal grief or the collective grief that we share, I think collectively a lot of us are feeling this grief because of environmental crisis that we're currently living in. And Robin spoke a lot about this and how, you know, when we look around the world, you know, so many of us just feel this intense heartache when we see the state of climate change and our oceans and water and access to food. And also we feel this cultural grief um, at the loss of so many of our indigenous rituals and ways of living and our closeness to the earth. All of these things collectively have been really traumatizing. And then needless to say, COVID <laughs> and the grief that COVID has placed on our hearts as we've been separated from friends and family and community and that we've seen so many people suffer um, in our medical care system. So, you know, as I'm saying all of these things, even my own heart starts to feel like, you know, this heaviness. <clears throat> but what Robin spoke of that she's touched on in Braiding Sweetgrass is that even though there is this grief, you know, this is also the other side of grief, she said, is love. You know, that if we didn't so deeply love things and care for things, the grief would not be, you know, even a fraction of what we're able to feel. So it's almost like to the extent in which you love something is the extent by which you grieve it. And so for those of us who've lost loved ones, it's like the depth of our love reflects the depth of our grief when we lose them. Or even as a parent, the weirdest thing is like, I grieve my children, even though they're alive. <laughs> the depth of my love for them is so intense that the thought or the fear of losing them is just like almost unbearable. So I can't even imagine the grief for a parent who loses a child, like, oh, just goosebumps and gut wrenching pain, <laughs> just, and even the thought of that. So, you know, we, as collective beings, you know, we're all here living together on this planet. You know, we're all these embodied souls living in this great earth community. One of the things that I think none of us can deny is the bond that we share of love and whether we love, you know, whether you love me or not, or I even know you and can love you. It's not, it's not even the act of loving the specific person um, that is such the connector, but just the fact that we all 
have this depth of love and the way that we show it, express it, feel it is actually quite similar. It's actually more similar than it is different. And so when we think about grief, um, And this is something that Rukmini Walker, who I've spoken about in in a lot of my bhakti talks in the series we did on the sacred feminine, you can listen to that on my channel, the heart of the sacred feminine series, is she said that the, the price we pay, that grief is the price we pay for love. You know, everything has a price. And so the price of love is grief. And if we can hold that and not see it as a burden, but see it simply as a reciprocation. And this is something that Robin speaks a lot about in Braiding Sweetgrasses. Everything is based on this law of reciprocity that everything we give, um, there should be a feeling of responsibility from the receiver to then give back. And that kind of like the flow of reciprocity, this cycle or spiral of reciprocity is what keeps everything moving and keeps things uh, in a sacred harmonious balance. And so what happens often in grief, and I'm speaking here from my own experience, is that there tends to be this sort of bottomless pit where we, we kind of like dive into these deep, dark waters that feel uh, bottomless. And, 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 and it's scary because we think, I should say, I think sometimes when I go into these places, I'll never come out. If I really go into these feelings, I'll never come out again. I don't know if any of you ever feel that, but that's kind of where I go. And it's terrifying. But then the teaching in that or or the flow, if we actually look at it as a circle and a cycle and, you know, this, this, how love is a circle, (laughs) and grief is a circle, if we can start to find a way to show even the tiniest morsel of love, we can start to move out of the pit of grief. And so what is it that we do? How is it that we move through this? Well, if I can, in my own grief, give a little bit of my own love to someone or something, you know, if I can just wake up and water my plants and say, look at what, this is what all, this is all I can do today for you is I can water you. That's, that's about it. But I can see that within me, I still have the capacity to love. I still have the capacity to give a little morsel that helps to create that movement and that flow. And in the same way, if I can smile to someone on the street or at the grocery store, you know, pick up a fruit that they dropped, (laughs) you know, how you pick up, you know, someone picks uh, an apple and then all the other apples start to tumble. You know, if I can just take a moment and say, I have something to give, I can pick up these fallen apples, put them back and give a smile and say, it's okay. I'm happy to help. That then brings me back into the flow of giving and, and moves me out of that state of grief. Um, one thing that really struck me, there were so many takeaways I had from this talk with, with Robin, but one of the things she said, you know, we were talking about like, well, what do we do with all of this grief, especially the earth grief, the grief we see when we just look around or we hear the news and we see the environmental degradation around us. As she said, well, she was sharing this from a new essay that she's writing for her new book. And she said, and I'm going to paraphrase this because I don't remember the exact words, but it was basically along the lines of, I don't know much about hope. You know, people talk about hope. They say, what's the hope? What do you hope for? And she responded, I don't know much about hope, but I do know a lot about love. And she said, so maybe, so for me, rather than hoping for something, I'm just going to love the earth. And she gave this great example. She said, you know, when someone you love is sick, they're really ill. What do you do? Do you turn your back on them? No, you love them more and you, and you care for them and you give them what you can. And she said the same thing we could think of for the earth. Earth is a being. She's, a, she's alive. In yoga and Sanskrit, she, we call her Bhumi, um, uh, Mother Bhumi, or we could call her Mother Earth. You know, um, there's so many different names for, for the earth. But do we turn from her? No, we just actually love her more. And we let ourselves feel the depth of our love for her even more. And in that deep loving, we find action. 
We say, I'm going to plant a little bit of flower, wildflowers in my yard, or I've got a sunny windowsill. I'm going to plant something there, or I'm going to give thanks to the dandelion that's growing through the cracks as I walk to work. All of those little things are things we can do to show and reciprocate love. And, you know, one example that someone gave from our community was this older gentleman who converted his yard in downtown Minneapolis into a community garden. And he welcomes the children, the kids in from the city and they all garden together. And this is their third season. And he said, you know, it doesn't, I don't have a big yard. I don't have a lot of money. I'm an old person, but I have time and I've got a little bit of land. And that is enough. That is enough to, to give people and to give children the opportunity to get their hands in the soil and to feel this reciprocity with the earth. And I just loved that. It just, it's, it's such a move into empowerment and into um, this idea of what Robin calls the gift economy, which is instead of just consuming, what about the economy of giving? And in the economy of giving, there's this feeling that you have to give back something. It's like, you know, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. So that's one, one way we can address this. So let's talk now about the herbs. Um, we'll talk about Hawthorne for collective grief and strawberries for personal grief. Both of these plants are in the rose family. And what I love about rose family plants is that they have most of them, like pretty much all of them, except for a few, have thorns. So they have this, these beautiful fruits, these beautiful open flowers, but they also have protective thorns. And to me, this is such a great way to visualize how we can work through grief and start to bring love back into our hearts to fill the well so we can start to give it back. Hawthorne, many of us know as herbalists or those of us who work with this plant medicinally, it's a cardiotonic. So it is considered to be um, a plant that restores cardiovascular and improves cardiovascular function. It's high in a lot, the flowers and the leaves and the berries are high, and especially the berries are high in antioxidants, which help to build stronger arterial walls and improve circulation and blood flow. Um, also improves muscular contractivity of the heart muscle itself. So we know that Hawthorne is a good medicine for the physical heart, but it was also used in the Druids and in Druid culture and by the Celtic people as a heart medicine and for longevity. So I'm going to just pull up some photos here. I'm going to share my screen and uh, share with you some pictures. So this is a picture of Hawthorne growing as a hedge plant. And I just love this because, um, you know, Hawthorne was, a, a, one of its other names is hedgerow um, because it grows quite quickly and it forms this protective barrier. And so if we can think about when the heart is in a state of grief, we need, it's tender, right? It's extra tender. So this idea of having a plant that will also protect that tenderness while also feeding it an abundance of nectar and fragrance and um, fruit, I think is such a great image and such a great teaching and, and uh, lesson from this plant. This plant was also called um, the fairy tree as it was believed that fairies gathered underneath it. It was considered to be very uh, um, inauspicious to cut this tree down. It's a uh, also called gentle bush by the Celtic people, gentle bush, which I thought was such a beautiful name for the idea of how it can protect and cover. And, and the one that we're talking about here is this one in the middle. This is the Crataegus. Crataegus is a Latin name. I have SPP here because um, there's a number of different species all in this family that are medicinal. So depending on where you live, you might find a different species where that can be, that can provide good medicine. This plant and tree or bush is a place of shelter and food for many insects and animals. And there's actually a very specific butterflies who feed on this plant that only feed on Hawthorne. So it provides refuge and a sanctuary and shelter for so many. Culpepper talked about this plant as being ruled by Mars, which I thought was kind of interesting uh, because of its thorns. And he called it a great boundary keeper. And he considered its seeds, the Hawthorne seeds, to be considered a great 
a great medicine for inward pains. So pains of the emotionality being inflicted inward into the heart. And Jim McDonald talks about it for emotional pain and it creates healthy boundaries while you heal. And, um, you know, we can just, you know, imagine meditating under this beautiful tree for the collective grief that we are, we are currently experiencing and every generation has grief. It's not like we're unique, but I think having an image of where we can go in our minds and our hearts, or even physically in our bodies to a hawthorn grove, or to sit under the the medicine or shelter of a hawthorn tree, um, can be a very beautiful thing. I also wanted to share an interesting story from my own experience with this plant. Um, my husband, Achuta, um, had COVID and um, it was really towards the end. And he, there was this cough he just couldn't get rid of. And on like the, you know, this, it was, he, he woke me up um, really late at night and he was having difficulty breathing. And he was feeling the collective pain of all the people who've died from COVID and all the healthcare workers who've seen people die alone. And he was just feeling how the fear and the terror of somebody in a hospital bed who was all by themselves on the brink of death, dying with no one there to be with them as they'd made this transition. And he was just sobbing under the weight and his, you know, his breath was shallow. And I gave him a bunch of a concoction of herbs to break down and move the energy. So I gave him wild cherry bark and prickly ash and ginger and elecampane and mullen to um, break, start to break up the congestion. And I gave him um, also California poppy and blue vervain to take the anxiety down. And so he started coughing and coughing and coughing and moved some of the energy out. But then I had this huge intuitive hit. I was like, he needs a big dose of Hawthorne. And so I ran upstairs into my apothecary and I gave this, I, I poured a, a you know, shot glass full of Hawthorne. Uh, it was the flower and the leaf tincture. And I gave it to him and he just, I, it was like everything changed. I saw him go, <gasps> and then he coughed and he relaxed and like the, his whole energy changed. And he was like, what was that? He's like, that was deep. And I was like, and he started just, you know, moving. I could see the emotions moving more freely. And I said, that was Hawthorne. And he was like, that hit my heart so deeply. He was like, wow. So we sat in silence for a while and uh, both collectively, like it was like, I was then in the boat with him, just breathing and feeling this, um, this heart energy moving like, a, you know, like through these waters, it was very powerful. So I think, you know, Hawthorne is a great medicine for traveling through collective grief. Um, and it just, you know, it provides like an, or if you're like on a boat by yourself, you know, stranded, um, it gives you an or by which to travel through this feeling of grief. The next plant for personal grief is strawberry. And Robin Wall Kimmer in her book, I'm just going to read a quote that she wrote that was so beautiful. She said, strawberries first shaped my view of a world full of gifts, simply scattered at your feet. Gifts from the earth or from each other establish a particular relationship, an obligation of sorts to receive and to reciprocate. And so if you've ever walked through a strawberry patch, it's just the abundance of it can be simply overwhelming. And to me, strawberry really speaks to the sweetness of life. These red, juicy, heart-shaped fruits, these big, open, very vulnerable flowers, and these big, rounded, um, protected, jagged leaves on the plant really speak to what fullness there is in love and how even in our own personal griefs, how is it that we can still love? Like, it's just like blows my mind. Like, how is, thank you, you know? I mean, that's kind of what I, I always get drawn back to is, wow, thank you, God. Thank you, creator, for this abundance of feeling of love and, and pain so deeply connected, this roundness of life. And, you know, strawberries, you know, I, I, I 
came to this medicine for personal grief because it's something we can all find. We all have access to, especially this time of year. So if you can go strawberry picking or even pick up some strawberries from your local market and just sit in quiet, let them be room temperature. Don't eat them cold. It's not as good. Just let them warm to room temperature and just eat them and let them you know, savor that sweetness on your tongue. And maybe even if you can put them in a basket and deliver them to someone else. Can you give strawberries as a gift to someone who's in grief or a, as a gift to someone that you love? Um, again, this gift economy that I think we are all trying to reestablish so that we can feel our place among the myriad of, of, of beings this way that we can just simply uh, giving a gift that doesn't cost very much, but that can speak to the depth of our own capacity to love and to forgive and to move forward. I think strawberries are, are that, like they're that embodiment. So if we can sit and receive the love, the gift of strawberries in our own mouth, in our own body, with our own senses, that may also give us the capacity to find a way to give again. You can also use strawberry flower essence if maybe you don't have access to strawberries or you are allergic for some reason, I guess that could happen. But I found um, Tree Frog Farms creates these beautiful flower essences and they write, flower essence of strawberry for when you get stuck in an emotionally charged mental loop. It helps create a certainty point in, un, in an uncertain world. And it helps to work strengthening the heart chakra. So seems like quite profound medicine, both uh, as a fruit and as a flower and a flower essence. And then here are the two books that I think if you're interested in learning more about grief, reading more about the author that I mentioned, Robin Wall Kimmerer, Braiding Sweetgrass is her book. There's also a great book that came out recently by Stephen Her Herod Buner um, called Earth Grief, The Journey Into and Through Ecological Loss, which is just beautiful, beautiful book. So um, these are maybe some places that you can go into. I'll also post a uh, link to a uh, webinar or not a webinar, uh, a podcast that was done by, um, what was her name? Glenn, did I write it down? Um, so uh, if you all know the book, um, Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert, um, she did a really amazing, uh, it was, uh, oh, it was with Glennon Doyle. She did a podcast interview with Glennon Doyle on grief and her own process of lo losing her partner um, and how, you know, how she sat with her partner through her transition through to the other world. And, um, and one thing she talked about with grief that I thought was so beautiful was that there's no one way to do grief. Some of us need to jump back into life really quickly. And some of us need to retreat fully from life. And that there seems to be this idea that there's one way to do grief. And she just in this interview was so articulate in how she explained the power of the individual grieving process. So I would strongly recommend listening to that. And I'll have a link for you all uh, to follow that along with some links of where you can find Hawthorne tincture, Hawthorne flower essence, and um, strawberry flower essences. So I hope this was interesting to you. If you liked it, like it. If you want to share this, share it um, and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what in this talk spoke to you. What's your takeaway? What's What um, might you share with someone? What is maybe one thing you might offer? to someone else today to participate in this gift economy. So thank you all, I appreciate you. I'm so happy to be a part of your, um, your journey. You know, I feel, even though I know <laughs> I haven't met so many of you, I know I have met many of you and I connect with you all through this platform. So I just give gratitude to your participation um, in my life. So I'll see you all again soon. Take care.